Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and every year Apple ramps up to build a new iPhone, and every year, right before they do that, there's usually releases of different models, so case manufacturers can actually manufacture their products around the overall dimensions of what Apple's going to produce. And so this year's no exception, we've been covering this for many years, so we'll take a look at the overall iPhone lineup, their designs, just like we did years ago with the 12 mini, and every single year. And thanks to Sonny Dixon for helping me get my hands on these. And so this year, as you can see, there's four different iPhones, but they're different sizes than previously. Just like many people suggested, it looks like Apple will no longer have a mini sized iPhone. So where the iPhone 13 mini would be the last size last time we had this size. And as you can see here, we have the iPhone 14, 14 plus or 14 max. The naming is a little unsure Then the 14 pro and the 14 pro max. So no longer will we have a mini. So we'll have basically two different sizes with different specs or different cameras as well as maybe as a few other things. Now, like I said, there's three different sizes and it's expected to have different screen sizes as well. The iPhone 14 is expected to have the same sort of 6.1 inch display on the front also still have the notch. Now these models only show the speaker placement like we had before, just like the years before where they moved it with the iPhone 13. It's the same sort of speaker placement now. However, when we get over to the pro models, the speakers in the same spot, but you don't see any camera cut out. And that's because this is expected to have a hole punch and pill design. So we won't have that sort of cutout, but we will have a different screen size because of that. Meaning that the 14 pro model would be from 6.12 inches instead of 6.06 .06 inches. And the iPhone 14 pro max would be 6.69 inches instead of 6.68 inches. If the different rumors are correct. So very small size differences, you won't notice it, but possibly due to the new architecture and maybe even getting those bezels a little bit thinner. Now the overall design is very similar. So we'll take a look at the plus model. We'll just call it that for now. And you can see that it will have an anodized aluminum outside edge. The button placement is very similar to that of the pro model, the current model, which again has that sort of shiny gloss where it would be stainless steel. However, based on this, you can see the power button on the pro max model is slightly below that of the, the plus sized iPhone 14. So the button placement might be slightly different there. On the bottom, you can expect the same sort of ports. Now with the recent ruling in the EU or the European Union, it depends on how quickly Apple has to implement this, but we could see these with lightning or USB-C, but basically since they've already started manufacturing these for the most part or gotten everything ready, I would expect lightning this year with USB-C next year, but you never know what Apple will do with that. But you can expect the same sort of speaker layout that we have now. And then on the other side, it looks like we're going to have a SIM card tray. Now, many people said that the SIM card tray was going to go away on maybe the pro models, but it's hard to say as sometimes this is just a stamping to give a placement but it's possible that they won't have one on the Pro Max models. Button placement is very similar though. The same volume up and down buttons with the silent switch above that. Usually every single year, Apple ramps these up for three years production, and then they'll switch the design after that. So maybe with the iPhone 15, we'll have a different design. Now with the overall sizes, like I said, they're very similar to what we already have. And Apple may go back to that plus size naming where we had the iPhone six plus and six S plus. They may incorporate that to say that this isn't the pro and it's not the max or the best of the best, but it is a larger size. So it's possible we would have that size. Also for a current size comparison, you can expect very similar sizes. So if we take a look at the current 13 pro max, it again gives you the size of the camera, but the camera bump looks even larger this time around. So the size of the phone is basically the same with the same thicknesses and everything else. Although this model does feel maybe slightly thicker, which could mean more room for things inside, but the overall camera bump does seem to be a little bit bigger where it's expected to have a, a bump in camera resolution with 8k recording on the pro models with maybe a 48 megapixel camera. So you would need additional space for that. And this may reflect it as previous years didn't really show these camera bumps very well. If we take a look at the prototype model from last year, you'll see that it didn't really show what the bump looked like at all. But this time around, we can see the bump very clearly. So it looks like maybe they have that correct this time around. And the bad news for that is it would mean it wouldn't fit the current cases again. So here's a current 13 pro max case. If I put that on, 
it doesn't fit properly around the camera bump. That means that the camera module is getting bigger and they will need to remanufacture new cases. So you'll have to buy new cases if you get a new phone this time around. If we take a look again at last year's, you'll see that it actually fits properly. So there's definitely going to be a bigger camera bump this time around and it will look a little different. So if you wanted to keep your cases, well, it looks like every single year at this point, we're going to have to upgrade those as Apple keeps changing the camera bump. In addition to the rear facing camera getting a huge upgrade, the front facing camera is also expected to get an upgrade. Currently it's a 12 megapixel camera. However, that's said to be getting upgraded on all of the different models where instead we would have maybe the same megapixels, but a much larger sensor allowing for better low light photo and video, or maybe just a larger sensor with even better megapixels as well. So that sort of lineup would be great to see as I think Apple's fallen behind a little bit on the forward facing cameras compared to others. The rear facing cameras are definitely the best when it comes to video of any camera out there when it comes to a phone camera, but when it comes to the forward facing camera, I would love to see that improved. So it's been similar for many, many years at this point it would be great to have an upgrade. Now, as far as what the colors may be, it looks like the blue or Sierra blue may be replaced with a purple. That's been the latest rumor, although last year many thought we'd have an orange color or sort of burnt, burnt orange color that we never saw. So it's very possible we could just have another shade of blue or something else, but it would be nice to see some additional colors as well. Now with the non-pro lineup, I would expect it to still have an OLED display at very high resolution. However, it's unclear whether or not it will have ProMotion with 120 hertz display. So it will be very similar as far as specs other than maybe that but it's possible we could have an always on display on the 14 pro and pro max models. This is based on code that was found in iOS 16, it seems, but we don't know that for sure as people have stated that, but we don't know that hundred percent that's just been reported here and there on different websites. So it's possible that we could have something such as an always on display where they could ramp the display speed up and down, maybe one Hertz like they do on the watch, then bring it all the way up to 120 Hertz. So it's something they do on the watch. They could definitely implement that kind of a, variable refresh rate display on the 14 pro and pro max. Now, as far as the overall designs, like I said, we're not going to see a major change year over year, but we could see some changes to the internals with the 14 pro it's expected that the pro models will get the a 16 CPU. So that could be called an a 16 bionic where the regular models will still have the a 15 from last year, meaning that it's plenty fast, but possibly more Ram up to six, six gigas of Ram in every single one of them. So it's possible we could have that also improved 5g and then when it comes to prices prices may increase slightly due to the current economy we don't know that for sure but it's possible we could have a slight bump however in the past when that's been rumored it's never been true so they've kept prices the same across all of the lineup so hopefully they can do that this time around as far as the release date of these different models i would expect mid-september however they could split these up again like they did with the iphone 12 models where maybe we had some release in september some in october i personally prefer that as a reviewer it makes it easier for me and sometimes easier for people to get their hands on them as they're sort of spread out over time. But either way, we can expect them usually in the fall or autumn. Now the devices could have better batteries in them if they are slightly thicker, like I mentioned before, but that would give it additional screen on time. We already have phenomenal screen on time with the iPhone 13 pro max. We could see even better with the 14 pro max if it is indeed thicker or the chipset is even smaller. So maybe we'll see that, or we could have similar battery life, which I don't think anyone's complaining about at this point, but that's everything. As far as the 2022 iPhone 14 models, this gives you a general understanding of what the cameras will look like the overall bumps on the back you'll see they're fairly thick on the pros but pretty much what you expect now with all the different models from the mini as far as the camera mod module and everything else and so that's everything for the iphone 14 lineup usually these are pretty spot on as far as the overall dimensions where the buttons are placed and more and you can expect the similar sort of layout here no differences whatsoever as far as the overall outsides compared to what we have now for the most part and basically very similar looks and then we'll have a major design change usually after this year with the iphone 15 like i said earlier but if you have anything else Else you think they'll change in this i'd love to hear from you in the comments below and if you're planning on maybe picking up an iphone 14 i'd love to hear from you there as well and which size you would get or a pro or the plus model or whatever they're going to call this let me know in the comments below if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching this is aaron i'll see you next time